Well, hi once again, ladies and gentlemen. AccuStats Video Productions is pleased to welcome you back to the 2016 Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. Thank you. We're coming to you from the Aramis Simonis Arena here at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, the home of AccuStats and the home of the Make It Happen series for the ninth time, ladies and gentlemen. Nine times we've done this, and nine times you have shown your loyalty and support to AccuStats Video Productions. Our format has been the same as it has been throughout the Make It Happen series. We play round robin. We invited six of the world's greatest players here to do that. They've each played each other once. This is the last match of the round robin format. Uh, there's still some drama left, so at the end of this match, we will know who our two competitors are to play at 9.30 tonight for the championship. I'd like to take another opportunity to thank our three signature sponsors, Aramith, Simonis, and Diamond, for once again supporting the Make It Happen event and professional pool throughout the years. They're great companies, and we can't do this without them. We also can't do this without each and every one of you. You've been loyal to AccuStats for so many years. We know it's not easy to make your way here all the time and show the support that you've done, but nevertheless, you've come through for us once again. And from everybody involved with the production on the AccuStats team, Ed Ladawi and his great staff here at Sandcastle, and our six great champions, we want to tell you how much we appreciate what you've done to once again make it happen. Thank you. Both of the players in this match have records of three wins and one loss. When the match is over, we'll know who's playing who at 9.30. Right now, it's my pleasure to introduce them to you. Our first player is from Glasgow, Scotland. This year, in just a few short weeks, he will be making his debut on Team Europe's Moscone Cup. He's had a terrific 2016. He's got top five finishes in both the US Open Nine Ball Championship and the World Nine Ball Championship. He won the Challenge of Champions earlier this year against a pretty familiar opponent, I think, sitting over there. Uh, but nevertheless, he's not done and neither is his opponent. Sponsored by Miyuchi and by the Kings of Vapor, ladies and gentlemen, it's Eagle Eye, Jason Shaw. His opponent's from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He has a great year every year, but he's also a great player. He's also a great representative of our game. He's a two-time Derby City all-around world champion, and he made history just a few short weeks ago by becoming only the second man in history to hold five US Open nine ball championships. And by the way, he'd only played in 10 US Opens, and he's won half of them. Not a bad batting average. Ladies and gentlemen, sponsored by QTEC, it's the South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. Your referee for this match is Mr. Carswell Ransom. Your official timekeeper, Miss Julie Ha. Official photographer is Carl Kantrowitz. And our official racking device is the AccuRack by Outsville. I'm now going to send it over to the booth to Hall of Famer, Danny DiLiberto. Go ahead, Dan. Be right there. Hi, everybody. AccuStats Video Productions is proud to present the 2016 Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. And we are playing now uh, the last match in the Round Robin series. This is match number 15 between Jason Shaw and the South Dakota Kid, SVB. Both of them have a record of three wins and one loss. Um, Corey Duell has a record of three wins and two losses, so the finalists are not yet to be determined until this match is uh, at least uh, well underway. But we do want to let you know that there will be uh, one more match after this. It'll be the championship match. But let's see what he does here on the opening rack. Yeah, the break, the first break is not as important in a race to 10 as like a short match, but... Anyway, you still like to win the first match, mm -hmm. first game, I should say. Mm -hmm. And he made a couple of solids on the break, so that's his group, because we're playing take what you make. 
And I, I actually think the players have enjoyed that this week, Danny, because it's been something that they, they don't usually play by. It hasn't really caused a lot of tough racks, but there have been a few where it's resulted in safety battles from the, from the opening gun. And frankly, it's, uh, it's been kind of refreshing to see. You're right. And my good friend Billy in Cardona, he thought the race was too long to start the tournament. Mm-hmm. But he was wrong. I agreed with him, by the way. But the way they're playing, they could play longer, like you said. Well, the well, solids were a little bit better because look where the 15 is sitting. Yeah, but uh, where's the 8 going to go, Danny? Um, I don't know if he can get by the 9 to shoot it here in the lower right pocket as the audience is looking. It will go up table. If he could get straight in on the 6 and stop, that would probably be pretty ideal. I don't know if it, you know, it, it goes by the 13, but like I said, I don't know if the 9 is impeding the uh, cue ball's ability to make clean contact with that 8, because the 9's a little bit uh, about parallel with it. Well, the way this guy's been playing, I'm sure he's going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Well, I think he, if, he, if he's got enough, yeah. He, one of those stripes on the right is his target with the cue ball. In between them is fine. But he's got to hit one of them with enough speed to move it out of the way so it doesn't block the cue ball. Yeah, the 15 stopped him from doing right, it right uh, there. No, no. That's, yeah, well, he, I don't he, know if he, he got in anything here. No, he's hooked, Danny. He let up on his stroke. Yeah. He doesn't have the six. That's the remaining yeah. solid ball. Yeah, I would have gone a little firmer and probably used the inside of the 11 as the target. But he had a guard against getting hooked on by the 13. Uh, this is not an easy ball to hit, either. He can't go one rail across. If he goes two rails behind it, he's got to deal with the stripe. Got to hit it and... Yeah, he's got to hit it and get a cushion, Very important to too. hit it because if you give Van Boning ball in hand, the 15 will not be a problem. Mm -hmm. Well, he's going to hit it cross there, but... Yeah. Well, he's in his extension period. Uh, maybe uh, we can show on the Telestrator here quickly what uh, what he's going to try to do one way or the other. He could go this way, but then this ball becomes big. And if he were to come this way, he risks maybe not getting a rail. Tough shot. But I think he's going the first way, and he's actually probably going to call it in the side. He, it, it, it barely passes the nine, but you got to do something. Is he trying to go one rail? Yeah, I think he could, Can but he he's going to have to put a little reverse. I think yeah. he could. Got to watch he, he don't, don't, don't want to hit the eight. Oh, he almost made that ball. He hit it very well. Great effort. Yeah. And like I said... Without ball in hand, mm -hmm. a 15 could wind up a problem here. Well, I agree with you. If I'm, if I'm Shane, I'm going to play safe here. I, was, I, I would thin the 13 and, uh, or right. the 12 and come two rails behind the balls on the spot. Well, he's not thinking well, that. Well, he, he could hit and stick. Well, he's, he's shooting. Yeah. Maybe he's playing at two rails, twice across. Yeah, twice across with a safe shot. I like that, Danny. Well thought out. And if I were Jason, I'd be pulling for him to have made that ball. Yeah. Although he's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to have to kick two rails now at that ball. Yeah, and it's not a very big ball kicking two rails because of the 10. You've got to shade the outside of the, of the six. You see where the chalk is sitting? On the end rail? That yeah. could be what he has to aim at. I think that that might be a little deep. I think it's more yeah, the more, it's make, more the diamond, isn't that's it? It's going to make it short. Yeah, but. it's more at the diamond, I believe, the first diamond. Yeah, but it's going to go pretty long. Yeah, right. Oh, in the look hole. at this hit! Wow, he almost made it. But once again, at least he didn't leave ball in hand. He hit it. 
No. A great hit. He almost made it. But, you know, great players, they're going to scare your opponent to death with stuff like that. Well, the issue Shane has is he sure he could shoot he could shoot one of these stripes in the corner, but the 15 that's near the side won't go up here in the corner until he takes the 11 ball out. Well, does he have an angle on the uh, on the 14, on the 14 to, 14 move, to, to move move hit the 15? The 15 yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, if he does, he's not going to roll it. He's going to hit it with a little speed. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. That could be the last problem in this rack. Yeah, if the 10 goes by the 6, he's in pretty good shape, and it looks like it does because he, he took yeah. a quick look at it. And he'll play it now, and then he'll play the 11 and come around the other side of the 9 and the 13. Pretty much a stop shot here. He might pull it back a little bit. Yeah, he didn't need to do anything because he has the proper angle on mm -hmm. the 11 mm -hmm. to go to the uh, 9 ball in the same pocket. Right. Just in case of speed. I don't want you people to think it's too easy. It isn't. Oh, that's a little short. But he short. hit it pretty good. Just no. a little short because he, he, he didn't want to have to run into the other ball. And now he might have to just pinch draw it to avoid the stripe that's on the spot. And go to the twelve. Yeah, I mean he can roll. He he can push he the thirteen. Like he can push the thirteen a little yeah, bit. Yeah, hit too. them both yeah. in the same pocket. Yeah, he had he had a good angle. Well, if Shane gets out here, I'm going to end a little bit of suspense because he only needs to win one rack to assure himself a spot in the finals. Right. The only way he cannot be in the finals is if he loses. 10-0. That's correct. So with the pocketing of this 8 in the side, he will lock up his position in the 930 championship match. <clears throat> so while they're racking them up here, uh, I'd like to take an opportunity to recognize some of our uh, Make It Happen supporters who have supported not only our current event, but other events in the past. And uh, this is coming right from Mr. Fleming and everybody else here on the AccuStats team. Victor now from New York. And Victor, we know you're here and we really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for uh, taking good care of Julie over there or vice versa, one way or the other. But thanks, Victor. Really appreciate that. Dave Nelson from California, my home state. I'll be there tomorrow where it's warm. Uh, Raymond Ortiz from Nevada, Mark Osborne from Wisconsin, and we have one more person uh, to shout out to right now who's sitting here with us, and that's Bob Osalinik from New York. Bob, thanks very much for what you've done to make it happen, and we'll get to some more of those here as we move along in the match. I don't know you, Bob, and you're sitting here. Uh, Bob, wave your hand so I know who we're talking about. There he is. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Bob. All right. Second rack, 1-0. Wow. What a powerful break. Yeah. Powerful noise. That's all he made, though, Danny. Yeah, he only the, made noise. The cue ball hopped way up in the air. He really cooked those. Normally, his cue ball doesn't bounce quite that high. Uh, I like the solids because of where the eight ball is. Every other solid has a pocket. And I think he'll start with the six. He's got the three down there for some insurance, but I don't think that's going to be the next ball. If he's not straight, he can get a little closer to the five. Well, for this guy, this is not a long shot. I think he's shooting the five right now and stopping there for the one. Exactly. He is. We've been saying it for a while now, but... He's probably the straightest shooter in the game, well, in the world, maybe. Yeah, well, if he isn't, uh, he's, he, close. He's, <laughs> one, he's 1A, like we said. Jason's really come into his own here in the past two years, but, I mean, he's had a tremendous 2016. Like I said, uh, he come out uh, top in the points list for the European Moscone Cup. He won the Challenger Champions, the Kuwait Open. Uh, 
about 10 months ago, but he won the Bigfoot 10 ball challenge at Derby. Um, came third in the U.S. Open. Shane put him out after he had a 6 nothing lead. He's originally from Glasgow, Scotland. Yeah, yeah. And when he first came here, he lived in New York City where he beat all the players around that area. Mm-hmm. Then right now he lives in Connecticut yep. with a wife and a beautiful baby. Mm-hmm. Yep. <coughs> and he's a great person. Very colorful to watch. He doesn't play slow, which I like. Now he's got the right angle to go one rail to the eight. Maybe he'll go two. Yeah, I like all, I like will. I like this. And he did. Watch out! Oh, he snookered himself. That's the only place he could hit the fifteen <laughs> and get hooked. Any other place he hits that ball, he's okay. But I still think he played the shot correctly, Danny. He really, did, even though it came out like that. Yeah. Coming across, like you said. Um, the speed didn't lay quite as easy, and, and he, he would still have, would have had a long, a long shot would have about been this real distance. Long. Well, anyway, he made a shot like this yesterday. Oh yeah, the seven ball that yeah. he kicked in. Yeah, I know. This one is if he can hit it. He he missed it by a hair. Well, Shane cannot shoot the hanging ball, but there's nothing wrong with the nine. Well, I think there are. I think all the stripes are hangers for this guy. <clears throat> well, is Jason automatically in the finals? Not yet. If he gets I'll, slaughtered I'll, here, he won't be in it. But tell me who will be. Well, Shane, well, right now Shane's in, and it's either going to be Jason or Corey. It depends on how many games Jason wins. And I'm going to hold the suspense on that just till the end of this rack. <clears throat> Or maybe one rack more before I let out how many games Jason needs to guarantee a spot in the final. <clears throat> yeah, go to the 13 next. Not the 13, the uh, 15, excuse me. And Jason won the most lopsided score you could win. He beat uh, John Morrow. John Morrow, <clears throat> 10 nothing. And it wasn't uh, it wasn't because John played all that bad. It's just John broke dry about four out of five times that he broke. And when Jason broke dry, John didn't have much to shoot and at. It's, it's pretty just... improbable to lose ten nothing with alternate breaks because mm -hmm. that means you broke five at least. Right, right. All right, two nothing for Shane. At this moment. Jason is not yet in the finals. He's not even on the board yet. Right now, Corey's in the finals, but we're going to wait till Jason wins a game, assuming he does, and then we'll tell you whether that got him there or he needs more. A lot of the people out there already have figured this out, but uh, I'm sure there are some that well, you're keeping still don't me in know. suspense too. Well, that's too. good. But that's I don't want to know. You're right. I'm looking for Corey. I see if there he is he's up there. He's sitting over there. He's, yeah, he's but he's, there. he's doing something other than watching the match. <laughs> I'd be watching for the match and doing some kind well, of hoodoo. <laughs> well, I think uh, he's satisfied right now to let Shane do that for him. Well, I'm getting conflicting information about how many Jason needs. Right now, he needs to get going. <laughs> He's two nothing yeah. down. Notice too, everybody. Um, Jason breaks. At least he has this week here with his playing cue. And we asked him about that the other day, and he said he can uh, control the cue ball a little bit better with the tip that he has on that. He certainly has plenty of power, but um, it, it enables him to control the hop on the cue ball after he hits the head ball. I think he made three solids. We made at least two. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he made two, and he just pocketed one, so there's four left. And 
and uh, that's pretty good. We're going to have to come straight down the table to get on the deuce. I don't think he can go two rails. He's too steep. Just a little bit of left center here and straight in between the two stripes. A little more, a little more. Okay, Perfect. yep. Now he can probably follow between these other two stripes. He wants to. Oh, uh -oh. my gosh. Uh-oh. You know what we call that, Danny? And you know this term. It's called steering the cue ball. Because he took the shot for granted to make sure that the cue ball went through the gap. Yeah, and, he blew a good chance. Yeah. And on this on his break, too. I mean, and the thing been about it, folks, is that kind of shot, he could lay a million to a dollar mm. betting and, and won't miss it. But right now, in the heat of battle, he missed it. And I don't say he dogged it. He just got a little bit lax. Yeah, he put all of his focus on the cue ball, and he basically forgot to pocket the ball. <clears throat> oh, he's, he doesn't like that, because... He knows that if he gets slaughtered here, he's not in the finals. I still don't know how many he has to win. He missed yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, okay. Jason is going to get a rare another chance. Usually, yeah. that would be the end of you in this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised that that was Shane's shot selection. I thought he might have played that in the side and gone forward. If he missed it, those two stripes would have hooked Jason. But he had a ball hanging that he was going to be able to kick in pretty easily. All right, well, what I can tell you, everybody, when this ball goes in, he's still not in the finals. So I would guess he needs more than one. He needs more than one. <laughs> See how smart I am? You catch on fast. I do. I went to college. Yeah. I could add, subtract. Well, maybe not subtract, but I could add. <laughs> I'd like to get back to some more uh, shout-outs for our Make It Happen supporters, our multiple event Make It Happen supporters. John Palmore in Texas. Thank you so much, John. Jack Piantino from Wisconsin. Charles Pluta from Georgia. And Ray Piverinus all the way out there in New Mexico. Thank you, everybody or what you did to make it happen. We'll get back to some more here later. Three nothing. Oh, excuse me, two one. There goes the second ball and the side. Yeah. He's got the stripers. <clears throat> got the stripes. And he's got a shot at the nine, which could be a problem ball. I think you got to shoot it now. Well, Don't the problem, yeah. Well, the problem ball is the uh, ball in the kitchen because it's got no pocket. The two blocks one pocket. It doesn't go in the other pocket. He's got to have to get behind it, unless he wants to cut this ball in the side now, and go down there and try to get behind it or or knock the two in. That's what he's looking at. Can I knock the two in, or can I get behind, get by the two, and get underneath that? Well, I would shoot the nine, you know, and then he, well, can, the nine, get, he can get almost to the same place drawing the ball. <laughs> well, we'll see. Well, that was that was really well done. I mean, he got the little double kiss, which helped him. I don't know that that was part of the plan. I think he was actually trying to make the two and maybe come around it to play the stripe in the same pocket. But this works fine, 15 in the side, and then he'll take that one in the kitchen before he comes down here for the last three. The nine is, you know, pretty accessible from a couple of places, Danny. That's why I think he didn't, he didn't uh, uh, rush to do it right away like you suggested. Because he, he only had one opportunity to clear that two ball, and he had to do it off the first shot. And I thought he could shoot the nine and get that same Again. angle, but it... it well, but now but I'm going right. to tell you, but, but now, now you're contradicting one of your own uh, 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 philosophies. If you're already there, why try to get there again, you know? Well, it's the same it, for the nine, too. 
But it's all right. Well, he, yeah. He's a great player, and he can overcome it all, which he did, no problem. Mm hmm Yeah, it's like Buddy Hall said, and I always repeat it. Buddy Hall, one of the great nine ball players but, of all time, he says, don't play position when you already got it. And that's what Kenny was referring to without mentioning Buddy Hall. Yeah, sometimes you're in the best spot and you might never be able to get back there. Well, this is for 3-1. Pick up a few more of our Make It Happen supporters, our multiple Make It Happen supporters. Tony Rapone from Nevada, Mike Rhodes out there in California land, along with uh, Jimmy Ribera, also in California. Frank Rolf from Maryland, Robert Schroeder from Florida, and from the great state of Washington, it's Gail Schultz. Thank you for what you all have done to keep all this going right here and give me and Danny a chance to sit here and do You're what right. we love and, to do. And, and, and the other players, you know, <clears throat> they don't have a real lot of tournaments, so they are happy to have something like Pat produces, Pat Fleming, that is. I have trouble calling him Mr. Fleming because we all have been doing things together. It's like family and I can't call him Mr. Fleming so easily. Mm -mm. To me, he's Pat. <laughs> All right. Jason still needs a game or so. Dry, dry, dry. Seven? Yep. No. Just no, a couple no. almost. Yeah. But that doesn't get you to the table, the almost. <clears throat> well, my first thought here would be probably the solids. <clears throat> Just because he's got a nice open. Well, I mean, he's got he's got all kinds of opening shots. But the eleven ball. Well, it'll if it'll pass the seven. I think the stripes would work too. But he'd have to start with the fourteen if he's going to shoot the stripes. I and then the cue ball yeah, goes I, into the eight. So I, I'd start with the six. Yeah, the solids are a little better. Yeah. If he can shoot the six and get to the one, I think so. I think that's yeah, the we'll play. It will take Danny. care of some problems. Yeah, I, I agree with you, partner. Well, Six, one, I, I don't float, mind you agreeing forward. with me, but when Billy agrees with me, I think maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Did you ever think Billy could be wrong? <laughs> and you're yeah. right? He no. He won't let yeah, you think that. Yeah, but that wouldn't be fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, he got to the one. Oh, that's that's sweet right there, because now he can get himself a little angle on the five, or the, the four, whatever that is, to shoot down the rail here. It's the four. Yeah, he wants the cue ball right where the one is. There it is, a bald width off the rail. He's got it. Well, the three looks like it's it'll it'll go in the side. He's yeah, he's going to pull it back for the deuce here. Yeah. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. guy. Speaking of uh, Jason playing good the last few years, this guy's been playing good for five or six years. Oh, he just played super to win the U.S. Open. Of course, you were there. Yeah. He played great, and he won it from the loser side. Yeah, he lost his. Uh, he lost his second or third match to uh, Chang Yung Lin, who he wound up uh, beating in the championship match. Yeah, he got his revenge. That's what he was trying to do, but. But I think he won uh, seven or eight on the one loss side to get nine. there. Was it nine? Yeah. He won nine. That's tough to do, playing the best players in the world. Yeah, well, he's got he, an angle to draw and play the eight in the pocket near the ten ball. He's got sideboards in case he hits it a little bad, which he did. 
<clears throat> I actually think he probably did that on purpose. <laughs> You're not going to miss hit it that bad, but you got to cheat it to the rail side there. Because if you overcut it too bad, it'll hit the 10 and it won't go. Well, there is old Eagle Eye. You can see uh, right behind him is uh, Corey, who is uh, playing with his phone like 98% of the world does nowadays, but I won't go into that. And you're still going to keep it a secret? You're not going to tell me how many Shaw has to win? Well, I've been getting... I, I got... I got a, a, a difference of opinion from two different sources. Now, one source was Mr. Incardona, and I, I feel he's pretty reliable when it comes to this stuff. Oh, he, let me tell you, he got on the computer for a whole day yesterday figuring out right. who needs what to get there. So, in other words, you're going to take him over Carswell. Or anybody else. And according to Billy, Jason hasn't got there yet. But I will tell you when he does if he does. Let's see how, how much this cue ball hops. Look at that thing up in the it air. It hopped in the pocket. Right. It didn't hop in yeah. the pocket, he, but well, it got hit in it. He didn't hit the one square. There's no, no way that cue ball goes in that direction on a, on a, a normal Van Boning hit. But let's have a look at the layout here after Cosmo moves. And uh, I might start uh, maybe the stripes. I got. I could go right to the ball near the five ball right now, the one that's between the five and the eight. I could uh, take the 14 and come down for that, or I could take the 10, 14, 13. But I still kind of like the stripes. Yeah. I imagine he would figure a way to get out with either. Right. But well, the advantage to the stripes is is once the stripes are off the table, the eight's got lots of pockets and there's all kinds of room around it. If you take solids, you're limiting where the eight can go, and it's going to be not that easy to get on it. So I believe well, this... Well, he fell on what I thought was one of the trouble balls. Yeah, this was the tough ball, and he got to it fairly early, which is what you're supposed to do. Well, you're... Backers relaxation, <laughs> get it early. <laughs> I think Jason, by the way, this is just my opinion. I have no uh, formal knowledge of it, but. I think he's the leading candidate for player of the year this year based oh, on no what he's accomplished. Yeah. yeah, I think I think Shane's a, a close second, uh, you know, partly because of the US Open um and in, in Derby and, and some other stuff too, but uh, I think Jason should be player of the year this year. Even though he didn't win the US Open, he did spectacular things that that makes me agree with you, you mm -hmm. know. What he did was probably as good as uh, Shane. Yeah. Yeah, he won one match. I think he was losing. The other guy was on the hill, and he won like eight in a row, I believe. Uh, it was uh, Copigny, and it was uh, in the final eight or the final four. I forget which one, but in a race to 11, uh, Copigny is a world 10-ball champion, and he's like one of the all-time killers from Taiwan um, in uh, China. And he had Jason 10-4 going to 11 in a winter break format. And Jason won the match. Seven in a row. And yep. then he almost did it later with the same deficit. Oh, against uh, Chang. Yeah. Yeah. Same score. Yeah. That and wound he fell up. short. Well, it went to case game. And unfortunately, Jason missed a long three ball. And uh, otherwise, he would have had two historic comebacks in the same event. But he got his revenge on Chang because that's who he beat in Kuwait to win the Kuwaiti Nine Ball Championship. Yep. But that's why I said what he did was just as spectacular mm -hmm. as uh, Shane. Although everybody forgets who runs second and third, they only remember the winner mm -hmm. in all sports. Yeah. All right, Eagle Eye breaking. Uh, 
Uh, see his cue ball control? And he didn't hit him hard, but he hit him really square. Shaw had the solids. Oh, he's got, anyway, he's I got thought, solids. I thought he got the name Eagle Isle after being in New York a while. But Pat Fleming said he was Eagle Eye a hundred years before that. Yeah, they 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 tagged him with that in Scotland. And uh, it's a, I think it's one of the coolest nicknames from for all the pool players. I, sure I, I, I'd love to be known as that. It's certainly a plus nickname. Yeah. You can't be eagle eye if you play like a turkey. <laughs> you could be turkey eye. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Benjamin Franklin wanted our national bird to be the turkey. Yeah. And of course, mm -hmm. it's the bald eagle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll tell you something about the bald eagle. You might not know, the eagle is not, not bald. bald. Oh, yes, I think. White was called bald years ago. Mm -hmm. Did you know that, Kenny? I knew that it wasn't uh, the eagle wasn't bald, but I did not know that that white was the uh, bald uh, the, the synonym white. for it. Yeah. I know a lot of things you can't make a quarter with. Yeah. Well, I've always said, Danny, that you're you're a plethora of worthless information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if I only knew what plethora meant, uh, I would agree. No. Um, he didn't take long to get this game. No. <laughs> and that well, eight didn't roll out. How many does he need? According to Mr. Incardona, he just got Mr. there because he needed two. Four games to three. He actually got their last rack, but... We I wanted. To, I want. Well, I wanted to play it safe, just just in case Billy's computer was uh, on the fritz well, there yesterday. But it looks like we've got our two finalists, and uh, I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. Yeah, folks, you're gonna have to watch this match again. But believe me, uh, they're not gonna just play this out for uh, waiting to play the championship match. First of all, there's prize money at stake here, which is. A motivating factor. And there's and pride. Exactly, Danny. That's just what I was going to say. Every top player wants to beat the other top player, even if there's nothing at stake. Ego is at stake. Pride is at stake. Bragging rights, all of that stuff. And nobody Ooh, knows that. Don't that brag. Nobody knows that better than you. Right. What do they say? It's only, it's not bragging if you can back it up. Right, like Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. He did everything he said he could do. Mm -hmm. But in my case now, I'm 81, and all I got left is bragging. Yeah, but no one is old enough to be around to dispute anything you say. <laughs> no one could say, well, I was there, Danny. You didn't win that fight. No, yeah. no, nobody's around that can argue with you. I could be lying or fibbing. Okay. Well, he's got the stripes, and they all go. Oh, they're wide open, but how do you fall on the eight? You go 14, 9, 8. I think he takes the three up here and then shoots a stop shot on the 14. He may probably wind up having to play the eight in the side, the side where yeah. near, near where the cue ball is now. If he can get straight in on well, the if 14 he, yeah. in the end. Sure. And see What's that? he doing? He's pointing. I thought only the Filipinos pointed. You notice? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, they all do. Perica was the number one pointer. Yeah. But ever since Perica and Efren started doing it, almost all the players do it now. Especially when they don't get shaped, they point to where they wanted to be. Now he wants to get straight in on that 14. Well, he'd like to be around where the deuce is. That would uh, be straight in and yeah, short. Yep. Yeah. It's not an easy shot to do. I mean, well, I think I think I think three rails works here, Danny. Don't you coming off the third rail? Aren't right. you going kind of right at down right. the line and, there? And two are the ones that count. Well, yeah, but if he tries to go over and back, he's it's a risky shot. I I think it's three rails here. 
a little long. Even if he got long, he wanted to make sure he got this angle. Yeah. But what do you do now? Uh, I don't think he's dead straight. I think he can just roll it. Yeah, he's going to roll it. There's no way of shooting it hard. You'll lose the cue ball. Roll it in. Perfect. That's a, that's, a, that, that, that's a championship touch to shoot a ball 12 feet like that diagonally at a decent clip. Well, could he roll right into the six and that will hold him for the eight in the side? I don't think he, I don't think if he has to, I think he basically could just soft roll it and not even go near the six. Yeah, I think you got to go hit the six on the nose. That'll guarantee you getting straight. What's he pointing over there for? Well, he's checking the tangent line off the nine in case he wanted to dig down and maybe try to stop the cue ball. He wants to. He has to guard against getting jacked up over the six. Oh, if he rolls it, he, he won't. He won't get jacked up. Yeah. He'll hit the six on the nose. Now he's looking at coming to the center of the table and cutting the eight into the pocket yeah, by pocket. the six. Same pocket as the nine. But yeah, I think he's drawing it to center table, just by the way he's jacked up. Yeah, All right. he's got it. Yeah, and the five will stop the cue ball here. No the danger. Four will, the the four. four, yes, the yeah, four. You don't want to glance and scratch, right. though. No, he'll hit it full. See where the cue ball is going? Yep. This is the last night of the tournament, and uh, Corey Duell, as soon as Shaw got three, he left the building and went <laughs> yeah. home and packed. <laughs> yeah. I like Corey get... Duell played a good tournament, though. He did play well. Yeah. He was the only guy that broke from the side into the second ball. And I think he was probably successful 60, 70 percent of the time as far as making a ball. But and he left a lot of tough leaves. But he's the one who uh, who gave Shane his loss. That's right. Ten to nine. Yep. Played good. Or well. Well, wouldn't you like to know what's going on inside of that cranium? Yeah, but I, I, I said this yesterday. Don Willis, during the tournament, said, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could put electronic stuff on their brain and know what they're thinking? And then he said, I know what it would be. Coca-Cola and women. <laughs> of course, Don Will Willis was... Not a tournament player, but he was a road player and a very talented guy. Yep. Okay, he made a stripe in the side. Did you know Don Willis? I, I, I never met him, but I knew who he was. Yeah. He was kind of a short, squat guy, mm -hmm. and he had one gaff that he could brace people running backwards to their forward. That would catch a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> Which he did catch a lot of people. He ran around with Lassiter. Hmm? Well, every stripe's got a pocket. Yep. I think he's got to take the nine out now. Yep. Pull it back a little bit. He's going to shoot the 10 up the corner, I believe. Yeah. Then the 12 in the side, and then the 13, and the 14 will be the ball before the 8. You're playing pretty well, too. Yeah, you? but, you know, actually, Danny, I've had a good tournament from the booth this this time. You did? I didn't hear you miss many. No. I got out of line once, but, but, but I got back. Shaw is very colorful, and I like that he plays pretty fast. Yeah. No reason to stall. I always said this, mm -hmm. you know, top players know how to play. They don't need to look at everything and well, stall. I think a good way to describe him, too, in, in the same vein as what you're talking about, is this: he's decisive. 
he makes up his mind quickly. Yes, he plays at a quick pace, but he doesn't take forever to study nine different ways to go about things. That's what slows games down. Now, every now and then that's justified, but unfortunately there are players that do that on every shot on roadmaps. Well, I like it especially because the fans are impressionable and they might think that's how you play. Yeah. Slow. Mm -hmm. Danny, we're going to take another second here to get back to some more of our shout-outs for our multiple Make It Happen people. And um, my very first one's going to be to our gentleman sitting right over there, Mr. Terry Smith. Hey, Terry from Texas. Thank you very much. It's been a lot of fun having you here this week, and we appreciate what you've done for, for Make It Happen, Terry. Yeah, uh, Terry. We need you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, and keep being a supporter. And you'll see play like this. At mm -hmm. least twice a year. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, another one of our multiple Make It Happen people at uh, ringside with us here is Ken Stanlick. So thank you, Ken, very much for supporting us and being an Akistats fan. We love it. One more before Jason breaks, and that's Frank Sophocleus from Virginia. To Frank, thank you very much. We hope to see you here at one of the future Make It Happen events. So, 5-4, Shane breaks, and they're both going to play another match after this for the championship. And, by the way, 14 on the side, another stripe down, another solid down. I think he made two of each. One, two, yeah, three, it four, doesn't five, really six. matter. Six. Well, he's got his choice if he made two of each. Um, did I miscount two, four, six? Oh, he only made one solid. So he's got stripes. Um, <clears throat> but what I did want to finish up uh, saying was that the next match, although it's uh, the championship match, it also carries a, a $1,000 prize mm -hmm. in addition to this match does. And like you said, bragging rights. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Shaw is already on the Moscone Cup team of Europe, so he don't need this for that reason, but he is one of the Moscone Cup players Yeah, he was, the, he was the number one guy, I believe, along with um, Niels, uh, Albin Ocean, and I think the last two are uh, Dynamite Darren and Mark Gray. Shane will be appearing won the Moscone Cup for the 10th time in 10 years. He made it his first year in 07, and he's been on the team every year since. And as long as he's alive, he will be on yeah. the team. He's our solid American player. Yep. Well, he stopped to think here because... He does have a bank, and he has a couple long shots. I don't know. I myself would rather shoot, shoot the short shot bank, but I never was a great yeah, but long Shane, distance Shane, shooter. Shane, Shane Bank's pretty sporty. Yeah, he does everything sporty. Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to bank here. He's shooting at the 12 ball. Yeah, well, shape's automatic. Um I think he's going to split the wicket with this one. Bingo. He did. Well, he got a little out of line. Well, now, now he can shoot the nine and drag the cue ball down at the, right. at, to the, at the four ball. I think that's the angle he has. I don't think he can pull it straight back to where it is now. He, he doesn't really want to shoot the 11 now, number one, because of the 8. Number two, because then the transition from the 9 to the 8 would be much more difficult. So Plus, I think he's if got he it. shoots the 11 and misses the 8, he could snooker himself with the 3 ball. Very, very true. Very true. Really? He is gonna he's do, shooting it, though. Yeah, well, he'll miss the 8. Watch out, 6. Yeah. He's okay. Now the seven's in a little bit of the path. I think he can force this with center left and go around the seven. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. 
He makes them all look like hangers, Danny. I think he's the best player I ever saw. <laughs> all games. And he learned them quick. You know, he he started well, off, I heard, there's not even a big table. In very few so, in South Dakota, yeah. 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 Very few. Well, so, you know, I'm going to pull a billy on you here for a second and argue with you. Good. You said he's the best player you ever saw. Did you forget about a guy named Efren? I didn't, but I have trouble with that. Like in the old days, people would ask me who's the best player. I had trouble saying Lassiter because I beat Lassiter a lot. And same thing with Efren. Efren never beat me. Well, I, I guess what I'm just saying is that... But you're right. I, He's a great uh, player, great all uh, If you throw in three cushion, that really gives well, him the edge. Well, just, you know... All games. Look, Efren isn't the greatest bank pool player in the world, and, and, and nor is Shane. They're both, you know, certainly um, adequate, to say the least. But I think you got to wait another eight to ten years right. to make the statement that All you right. made, because then you got a comparable career. I won't I don't be think here Shane, in ten years. <laughs> yes, you are, because you're too ornery to go anywhere. <laughs> and, and, and what's Incardona going to do if you're not around? I know. He, okay, he'll have to go with you. Well, me insulting him, he he would be brokenhearted. That's right. So you, you ain't going anywhere for a while. But I do agree with you that since Efren has kind of, you know, gone a little bit off into the sunset four, five, six years ago, Shane, Shane's the best. Yeah, but he, he won tournament recently, mm -hmm. Efren did. But what, what I would favor... Shane, Shane has a more powerful stroke. Oh, no question about it. I mean, if Efren could have break the balls like Shane, he never would have lost a match in his life. <laughs> but I'll, uh, I'll digress one more second, and uh, since some of the suspense is gone here, just for a moment, and I'll ask you to also render your opinion when we're talking about great all-around players that play all games great. I think you got to put Alex in that conversation. Oh, yeah, but like you say, we need more time for that. Right. But there was another one that died at 38 years old, Harold Worst. Harold Worst, of course. Yeah, yeah. he would have been in that. Mm -hmm. But it, you know what? It would be like saying who is a better hitter, Joe DiMaggio or Ted Williams. I don't mind being second to either one of them. <laughs> All right, well, we'll get back to watching Jason uh, run these uh, cupcakes out here because there's nothing that's going to stop him. I think he's made his one mistake for the match where he butchered that two ball five or six games ago. And, of course, they both now know they're going to play again. Sure, they're playing for the pride, they're playing for the money, but they're also playing very loose and easy and comfortable right now. It's all... Basically, it's a warm-up set for the championship match. Right. But the inside thing with ego and all that, and the fan entertainment also enters. You don't want a fan to say, oh, he played okay, but he did this wrong. Mm -hmm. So they don't have that to say so far. He's a little out of line here, but it doesn't matter. It didn't roll off. <laughs> That's the sign of a confident stroke when you can hit a ball at that speed and split the cup. Dennis Stevens is out there in Nebraska, and he's one of our multiple Make It Happen supporters, along with um, Dave Solanowitz, Solankowitz, excuse me, uh, from Michigan, Louis Vogler from Florida, and we're sure glad to have you guys as ongoing members of the. Stats family, which continues to grow and grow every year. Well, let's see if Shane makes any uh, break speed adjustments here to keep that cue ball from hopping and heading towards that pocket. <laughs> Seems to have moved just a little bit more to the right. Maybe take, uh, maybe he'll take 5% off here, or maybe he'll crunch him again. And he whacked him again. 
but that's a much better, wow. much better cue ball, and they're wow. still dropping. Are there any left? He's got three stripes down. And two solids. One solid. One? Yeah, there's yeah, six on the it. table, yeah. yeah. So stripes it is, and the 11 ball is the tough ball. The nine, sh I don't know if the nine will sneak by the one there, Danny. It doesn't well, it look will like. if you, you know, well, I don't know. rail first. I don't know. I think that one's too far out. I don't think it'll go. Oh, I think it will. <laughs> Unless the one is frozen. It might be. You're right. I think it may double kiss. I don't. I don't know it if was. that's going to get right. in there. And if it is, if it doesn't, he doesn't really have. A, he's got to try it. Well, he thinks it does because that gets well, him to the fourteen. Easily. Well, you got to hit it easy. I think here, don't you? Yeah. 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 See, oh, you it, were right. Yeah, see, a double it, it kiss just didn't look like because it, it was frozen. Yeah. I call it an in off. Yeah. Didn't have an right. in off. <clears throat> Well, can you shoot this in the side and go to the three? Yeah, that's what I like doing. I like to be almost straight on the three, so I could drag it up there for the four and the six. Uh-oh. Well, I'll have the seven, Danny, uh -oh. if he goes too far, or I'll have well, the six in the, the side. Too. Right. And I, I think, think I'd just stop right there for the three. I, I don't think I'd try to move the four. He might bump the four, but I don't think he had to. Doesn't have to. Right. Four goes in four pockets. Four pockets, right. Well, five, but you're right. You know he what? I'd shoot, shoot the four him. right now. Right. Yeah, I'd shoot the four right now and stop. Yeah. Absolutely. Not that it's, you know, not that there's anything wrong with this, except for doing something like well, that. Well, I would have never hit God. the seven. Why did he yeah. And the right shot would have been the four right then. But anyway, now he's got to hit rails. He's going to hit a couple rails. Watch out for the side pocket. No, uh, he'll never. He won't even hit the second rail. I don't, I mean the third rail. He'll come one and a half times. You were wrong, but it doesn't matter. I was wrong, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're allowed to be wrong. You've been working I'm, hard all week. And you are well, a great I'm, worker. I'm used to being wrong, you know. I got, I got experience. Mr. Shaw went there. <laughs> <laughs> Tie ball game. 6-6. Six, six. Race to four, folks. The score is now tied at six. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to throw out a trivia question to our listeners. It's an AccuStats trivia question. Am I yeah. allowed to answer? Well, you might know. You probably no, do I know, I but you, you you can't yet. Uh, this is this is a tough one. Um, what was the name of AccuStats' first cameraman when AccuStats? went to other than the one fixed overhead camera, and they actually had one mobile camera. What was that man's name? Yeah. We'll, give, we'll give you the whole rack here to think about it. And I there's absolutely no prize for this other than bragging rights. I think I know who it is, but I, I can't think of his name exactly, but I, he lives in Key West, and he's a fisherman. Well, you just said, I think I know who it is, but I can't think of his name. But you are right in, in, in that description, Danny, so we'll, we'll, give you, we'll give you a check mark for it. Uh, answer, well, I, answer coming up after this rack, and you'll get, you'll get first crack at giving the answer. No, I have to think a little bit, but the fisherman part was easy for me. Yeah.
Well, he's got the solids. See, I, I don't believe he... in stalling here. <clears throat> he usually plays faster than this. Well, yeah, I mean, give, you know, give him a break. I mean, he's allowed oh, to I'm at not, least look, look at the pattern. I'm not condemning him, Kenny. <laughs> I'm not condemning him. This is one of those layouts, Danny, where there's three or four ways you can go, and he's just probably gone through a couple of those scenarios in his mind, and, and it took him a whole 50 seconds. You're just, you know, used to seeing him shoot in like six seconds, so it seems a lot longer than it is when he, when he takes a, a uh, half a minute. I think if the three passes, he's got to shoot it right now. Oh, the three definitely passes. It's the five ball that's the the, the concern, and he's well, going to he use can, the two to get yeah. on it. Or the six. Well, I'd rather go six to five, because if he uses the six to get on the two, right, it's he's a dead little if tougher. He doesn't yeah, get there. right, right. With the I'd two, like, he's I'd like still to got hopes. Right. That's why, that's why I like horse racing better than raffles. <laughs> because you got a longer time to see what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't like when they put their hand in the hat and they pull out and it's a number. But yeah. I'd rather see a long race. You must have a funny angle here. Oh, yeah, you got a little bit thinner. Yeah. You? He wanted to be straight it in. It looks on like the he's two. heading kind of to the right side of the 10 ball as we look at it. But don't you think he could just roll it real slow and still have the angle on the deuce? Yeah. But you know, he rather shoot with a little yeah. authority yeah. than a roll. That's mm -hmm. his style. Yeah. Oh, and he's jacked up a little too. Yeah, so he that... might go two rails. What she did. Well, that's... Uh, that changes things a little bit. The 13 is not exactly in the way of his stroke. But no. Do you go forward or do you come back a little? I come back. Because of where the 8 is. Exactly. If you go forward and you shoot the 5, you're going away from the 8. Here you've, you've, you've at least got the stripe to help you. I don't know that he'll hit the stripe. But if he had to, he, he could. He did, yeah. and, he, and it didn't hurt him. Well, see, now that's, th he, that's, he a, that. that's a professional player that knows where the balls are going to go after contact, and that's right. what you have, to, you have to have that to play at this level. It's like we've talked about in straight pool for so many years, Danny. When you run into them, you've got to know where they're going to go. You can't just yeah. blindly go into the ball. I thought it was a little funny, but it didn't bother him. Okay. He All knew right. he was going to hit those two balls. You ready for the trivia answer? Everybody, I, the question, I, I, the question I, I, was who was AccuStats first? Do I get first, first shot? Yeah, go ahead. Rick Bowie. You, Bowley. Bowley. Yeah, Rick Bowley. Okay, I don't know if you people out there knew it. They're all shaking their heads like they didn't no. know it. I gave them a big clue anyway. No. Fisherman who lives in Key West. Oh, well, that, that was a dead giveaway right there. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't all get it. <laughs> There's 4,000 fishermen yeah. who live in Key West. But all only right. one of them right. worked for Pakistan. All right, Shane trailing for the first time in the match. And he needs to hold serve because Jason won the lag. Something went down. I heard it. Stripes down. Folks, do you, if you ever wonder why that cue ball bounced all the way back and then went forward, it's because it bounced off of the uh, pile and then the high took right. later. Right. Just to give you the physics of what's going on. Yeah, he, he hits the cue ball about a tip above center when he comes through it. <laughs> and the mass of the triangle pack is what throws it back, and then as Danny said, then the follow takes and the friction grabs. Normally it doesn't come this far forward. Well, it did there. Yeah, it did there, and uh, does he have a stripe he can shoot, Danny? I don't see one. I don't think so. I don't see one. He doesn't. This is one of those rare I games where he... the take what you make is uh, gonna cause you a little problem. I don't think he can slice that uh, ball in the side, can he? 
No, but he's it's looking only, at it. It's the only thing he can shoot. I mean, he's he looking would, at it, but he would have to hit the paint. Well, this he's is, shooting it. Yeah. Well. Oh, this will be worth applauding if he makes it. Well, it's going to be hot, a hot cue ball here too. Wow, he did too. Yeah. Shane really excels when it comes to shots like that or feathering balls to play safe, even from six, seven feet away. He's well, got a tremendous eye for the edge of the ball. And, and a it, lot of it has to do with his aiming system. I don't know if anybody's had the chance to pick up the DVD he has out about his aiming system, but it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. But a top player doesn't like the cue ball to fly around because it doesn't have to stop like this. He's no. got two thin hits. He's got the 10 or the 15. I think the 10's a oh, little easier. Definitely going to shoot the 10. But he might run into the 8. I think it's thin enough to miss the 8, depending on the speed. He's looking <laughs> at it. He's putting his finger there. Well, you, you better not hit the 8 because you might, you might make it. Oh, he's not going to do that. Good shot. Yeah, he's playing for the combination. <clears throat> and he got dead. Oh, he got not perfect. perfect. Right. He got <clears throat> pretty good. Yeah, he got ball in hand good. Yeah, and he'll be shooting the 12 next. But he doesn't oh, want to sure. be straight in. Only so, well, he won't, he won't be because the cue ball be off on the rail and the, the first strike Great. was coming out. Now straightening on the nine and a stop shot and then it's uh, to tap out. One rail at the nine here between the one and the three. Nothing to it. A little bit of right. I know because our fans are are so knowledgeable, Danny, that they understand how easy he's making a difficult game look. I don't mean just this well, rack. I mean pool. This is our ninth make it happen, you know, and, and like you said yesterday, you look around and you see the same faces sitting in the audience, so they all got smarter. Well, we're coming towards a little bit of the end here, at least to this one, so I want to finish up on our shout-outs for our multiple Make It Happen supporters, and I'm going to start out with a couple of them that are right here ringside with us, starting with Dennis Walker. Dennis, thank you so much, and we're honored to have you with us once again, and we appreciate what you did in the past. And uh, next up is... Without question, Pat Fleming's favorite Make It Happen supporter. It's old big money sitting over there, Bill Wallace. And Joyce, who I don't see today, but Bill's son is sitting right next to him on to his left. Give us a wave there, son. Thank you very much. And thank you, Bill. And tell Joyce how much we appreciate it, too. And we got two more. They're not with us, but we hope they're watching out there. And uh, once again, from everybody here, thanks for being a multiple Make It Happen supporter. Nick Watson in Illinois and Jim Wayman in Louisiana. And it's not Louisiana. It's Louisiana, by the way. It's, it's what? Louisiana. It's not Louisiana. It's not, in other words, it's not, it's not, New, one Orleans. Syllable it's not New Orleans either. It's Nolens. Just to give you a little bit of education here. But, that's but again, you come up with something that's not important because... Whether you're going to New Orleans or whatever you said, <laughs> you'll wind up in the same place. I just wanted to add to your your, your vast knowledge of uh, irrelevant facts. Thank you. Okay. He's got, uh, looks like he's got the stripes. And let's see. Got a little little bit of work to do here behind the eight ball. I don't know that either of those balls have a pocket without them being moved. He's looking now to see if the 13 can be made, but I have a feeling the 14's got, got it partially blocked. When the 12's out of the way, he might be able to get in there with the cue ball. This is a but tricky he's got to situation. Start. He's got to start with the 12, I think, unless he cuts the 9. 
Well, you're really going to lose the cue ball off the nine. Are you, oh, he's playing it in the left pocket. I don't know why. Well, he'd have to. He, yeah. uh, and, and actually, I, he's going to have to draw it to avoid the scratch, so I don't think that's going to work no, out well for him. he's not shooting that one. I think he's got to shoot the ball next to the eight ball, Danny. Is, uh, right. But the problem is, will he have a shot after that? Might not. Can he see the 15 in the side? I don't yeah. think so. I think he could, but it's a little tougher shot. And the cue ball might get lost a little bit. Yeah, I think it's headed at the deuce. Funny spot here. Yeah. He has multiple shots at a stripe ball, but none of them are real good. Well, I think this is the best choice. If he can stop, move the eight. Well, and miss and sleep yeah. in the street. Well, yep. That wasn't the easiest shot in the world. I mean, it... it Not it, at all. It, it, it looked maybe routine, but by all means, it wasn't. He knew he had a flirt with the he eight a little bit. He broke his timing up a little bit. He, he couldn't shoot it right away. Yeah, but he got a hell of a good roll because he's left Shane pretty much nothing but a jacked-up shot at the four ball down there in the upper left. Well, could he bank the six? Yeah. I'd rather shoot that than be over the top. Well, you're putting the whole game on that. I think there's a better shot. I just think there's something better than the six if you look around enough. Oh, he's, he's I aiming think, at I the think four. It's, I think it's got to be the four. Because that you get rewarded with for sure. You do, and you you may come out okay if you don't make it, depending on the speed. You know, the 14 and the uh, other stripe that's near the eight still are a little difficult to get to. And... Uh, the 13 doesn't have a clean pocket. This will be a great shot. Yeah. No problem. But where are you going, cue ball? Mm. Oh, he might be. Oh, he's got the. Uh, you got the five? The five. I'm yeah. not sure. I Maybe think he does. So? That's, okay. that's it. Well, that's, that's all what he's, he's got. got. And then how do you get to the next ball? Can you go one rail to the three? I think you go one rail to the six. You don't want to hit it that hard to go one rail to the three. The glance may take you into the 14 if you hit it that firm, Danny. I think you got to go forward here with just maybe a touch of right. He may try to come all the way down just because it'll, it'll assist in pocketing the ball with a better speed. He did. Yeah, and he, he got to the three. He did his right. Or the two. Still got a little work here. I like the three and then go where he just pointed for the one in the side. Unless he can go there off the two, just come straight across. Yeah, right right on the line of his arm, straight across. Well, to don't the one forget ball. the seven. Well, if he makes a stop shot on the one, he's got the seven. Well, he doesn't have the angle to stop. He might be able to draw it into the rail. He's near the cushion. Yeah, that's true. He would have to jack up. Uh-huh. But if he comes forward, he's going like at the spot. Now he's going to shoot the seven. There's nothing wrong with that choice either. As long as you make it. I don't well, think, he was, I don't think he was worried about that. Yeah, he is a little thin here. If the one goes where he's standing, I still don't think he can hold the cue ball for it by the side pocket. He might be able to. He'd have to kill it with low inside, though. He might yeah. shoot the one right now, Danny, and leave the three. Go to the six. Oh, yeah, but he needs the six to get to the eight. No, he can get to the eight from the three. He There's could, plenty of real estate out there. We're talking about... He just gotta, if he misses the 14, he's got to be careful that he doesn't hit the six coming off the rail. Yeah, he's not going to hit the 14. Then we got to worry about hitting the 6. Right. Nice. He didn't hit either. Yeah, what he hit was Now pay, he pay can dirt. shoot to the 3. Because the 6 gets you to the 8. Yeah, well, now he can. But had he not gone that far, it was easy to go the other way, too. 6-3 instead of 3-6. Made a real nice opening shot on that long four ball, too, to get him going. Well, it may, 
Sometimes it seems a little unconventional to us, but this guy just always seems to play the right shot, you know? But you know he's playing well because he's got you and I arguing. <laughs> and it's more fun arguing with Billy. Well, I'm sorry uh, I can't fill those shoes, and uh, I don't know that I'd want to. <laughs> there's only one Billy, and there's only one of you. Was, you guys, well, you guys are uh, an institution. And I didn't say you should be in an institution. Well, that too. But that, you know, it wouldn't be too we far go from to the an truth. institution. I hope we're both in the same room. Anyway. Well, no one else would have you, so you're going to have to Billy be. Billy and I are doing the final match, folks, in case you're interested. So I can argue and insult Billy like I love to do. Mm hmm. I've got some uh, news to pass along that I just received from our director, Mr. Fleming. The final match that's scheduled for 9.30 is now going to be starting 30 minutes after this match ends. So we should be, you know, we're only got four or five games left here, and the way they're playing, that's probably 10, 12 minutes. So you folks so at home... So we'll Make your sandwiches right now. Yeah, so we should probably be underway, I'm going to guess, in the 9 o'clock vicinity, but uh, we'll give you the official as soon as the last ball's made here. Well. Give everybody a little uh, earlier, Shane earlier night. Shane came up dry. Yeah, and Jason can take control of the match back here if he can get out, because he'll be breaking then at 8-8, eight, eight, which means he would be breaking at 9-9 nine, nine if it goes to the hill. And you know, you and I have talked about this too, how important the lag is. Um, maybe, as you said, not so much here due to alternate break and it's eight ball, etc. But nevertheless, the point I'm trying to make is you never see guys practice in the lag five minutes before the match. And it's such an important shot. And I'm surprised not more players do it. Well, the straight pool players have the edge on the lag, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Did you always make your opponent break if you won the lag in straight pool? Of course. You never, Except you, if you were on a 5 by 10 Yeah, I was going to, that's in what I was going to days, say. Right. With the 5 by 10 you wanted you to break. Broke. Right. Yeah, you know, if you won the lag. Right. But it's very big straight pool because that might be the only shot you get. Mm hmm. Well, you remember the, the famous uh, Siegel Zuglin story about the lag? They were playing in the, the World World Straight Pool. This is probably in the late late eighties, mid late eighties, and <clears throat> Siegel wins the lag, so Zuglin breaks. Siegel runs hundred and fifty and out. Match is over. Zuglin goes over to Mike, shakes his hand, congratulates him, and says, Mike, um, you know, you're Great champion, world champion. Could you give me any advice? What what should I be working on uh, to help my game? Mike says, work on your lag. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when Siegel first went downtown in Rochester and played where Crane played, Irving Crane, you know, he was a young man and he wanted to go play Irving Crane a little bit. He went there. And he went up to Irving Crane and said, Mr. Crane, could we hit him together? And Siegel broke, and Crane ran 200 and played safe. safe. <laughs> yeah. Real first here. Yeah, I thought he was going to do that, but did he get away he with he it? He had an didn't. angle. Yeah, but he's hooked, didn't he? I don't know if he is. He's hooked. He can't make the four? Well, if he I can, it's, it's awful it. close. Boy, it looks close. I think he can make it. Uh, he's jacking Although, up. He's, yeah, jacking, he's jacking up jacking just up. a little Might bit. Might have to hop a little. Yeah. And no, it looked like he went right Oh, what it. a shot. What a shot. To spin that seven feet and okay. only have it curve a quarter well, of an what inch. What does he have now on corner, the seven? Corner pockets. Piece of cake. Oh, piece of cake, my foot. Yeah? My foot. 
What kind of cake? He missed it. That was not a piece of cake, pal. No, it wasn't a good piece of cake. I mean, now he's going to blow this game, and Van Boning is going to get on the hill first. I'd leave the two balls down here by the spot as the last two before the ball next to the eight. Well, if I'd want the ball next to the eight as my key ball. Well, and that's I'd want the, the four, best I'd way. Think, I'd want the 14 before do. that. Right. This, 11 in the side, 9 in the side, 15, 14, and then the ball by the eight. Oh, boy, he come way short. Now he's got to play this in the side. I'm not, I don't know if that was his plan. No problem. There's no problem no, anyway. No, I guess that was more accessible than it looked to us as far as going into the side pocket. But you're right, uh, Jason uh, really butchered this, this opportunity. Now Shane's going to be uh, on the hill. And he'll have the psychological edge in the finals if there is such a thing. Well, not necessarily. He hasn't won this match yet. Yeah, but it's something to talk about. I'm not sure either one of these guys is going to get psyched out by the other one. But this is going to assure Shane at least one break for the match. As uh, Jason breaks now. So even if Jason breaks and runs for 9-8, Shane will be breaking on the hill. Mr. Van Boney now leads the match nine games to seven. Well, so far in this tournament, Shane has been near perfect. He lost yeah. one match to, to a Corey Duell, mm -hmm. 10 to 9. Yep. You know, I think it was also uh, terrific, Danny, for this edition of the Make It Happen that we got a chance to see a couple of uh, players we, we hadn't seen much of before uh, and one who we never saw before, John Mora. I'm glad that the fans got an opportunity to see John play. Forget that 10-0 thing. That could happen to anybody at any time. But John did wind up after that drubbing 10 nothing in his first match. He went 2-2 two two after that. And... Um, John Mora is, is, is one of the futures of our game. He's just a great person and a great, great young player. Allison Fisher played, him, played with him in the Scotch Doubles at the Tornado Open, and she said this. She said, John Mora may have the, the best-looking stroke I've ever seen. And that's, that's Allison Fisher's opinion, but I'm, I'm just saying that um, it, it, it's just another testament to the fact that this young man is really a great player. Nothing um, against Allison Fisher, but I wouldn't let her pick my horses. <laughs> well, the whole point I'm making is it was it was wonderful to get an opportunity. Nice shot there, yeah, Jason. He did that on purpose, yeah. of course. Uh, it was great to get a chance to, to see John play uh, in this venue in front of the Akistats people. And uh, it was nice to, to get Rodney here, uh, you know, on the heels of his Hall of Fame induction. What's happening here? He yeah. snookered himself. He's just, uh, that, that's just the lapse of concentration. He's never supposed to make these kind of mistakes. He'll probably kick it in, Danny. That's what he's been doing all week. Yeah. Getting hooked and kicking things in. I don't know about that, pal, but no. uh, it was a bad shot. Yeah. I think I'd kick one rail at the 15, because I might come out safe. Yeah, now you can just go put your cue in your case and get ready for your next I don't match. Know. Did, the, did the eight tie up? But that's not He's got ball in hand. He's going to break it open yeah, right here. He's got to break it open and play position, and he's got the one hanging, so he doesn't have to hit it hard. No. <clears throat> And again, as you and I have said many times over the years, when you break a cluster like that, you only go into one ball. You don't, you don't move them both. If you move right. one, you've opened both of them. Right. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, this is... Uh, and the three is, will get you to the eight. Exactly. This is, this is a tap out here. Five. 
Okay. <clears throat> I just want to remind everybody, since it looks like Shane's going to clear these last four balls and the match will be over, 30 minutes from the time this eight ball goes in is when we're going to lag for the championship match. Right now it's 8.30. So uh, we'll, we'll figure 9 o'clock. We'll start our uh, pregame festivities and everything. Probably 9 o'clock on the dot. we got a couple of things to do before we get underway. Some thank yous we want to mention and some other stuff like that. But nevertheless, um, we'll be at least 30 minutes ahead of our scheduled time. And I think we're, we're all for that. So it's going to be Shane and Jason in the rematch in 30 minutes for the 2016 Make It Happen 8-Ball Championship for Hall of Famer Danny DiLiberto. He'll, he'll be back with Billy uh, at 9 o'clock. And we'll see you all then, everybody. Thanks for making it happen.